Why did I trellis it like this? <gasps> Oh no! Oh, Miro, did you broke a leaf? Hello, and welcome to another episode of You Think You Know What I Am? Gotcha! <laughs> it is a new Netflix special featuring Hoyas and me. I expect it will be a great success. Which would be great, because you could skip the intro right away. <laughs> Today I wanted to talk about this lovely little Hoya here that I have had for a while now, and I even featured it in my 30 Days of Hoya. In those videos I called it Hoya Species Affinity Chuniana PNG6, but since then I have changed that title, and basically the reason for that is when I was making those videos I did not see this plant in bloom. In fact, it bloomed quite recently and also at that time I did not know to never trust a Hoya for its name. Or really anything else, just don't trust Hoyas. The plant has bloomed since that video and it was very obvious to me that it is not Hoya species affinity chuniana, but it also is not what I thought it was. Stay tuned to find out more. And don't worry, I will tell you the entire story, whether you like it or not. Honestly, I will probably tell you even more because someone has a problem staying on the topic. I don't know who. I purchased a cutting of this Hoya in October of 2019 from a collector slash seller from Germany and I will not mention their name because that was not a very pleasurable experience. Of course, I will not shame anyone, it could be that it just it was just a one-time thing, but from what I have read, I don't think it was. I got the Hoya back then and it was unrooted cutting and it was very, very small. For me, this plant was easy to root, but since then I have shared, I think, two times cuttings with my friends and they have told me that it is taking a while for them to root. I have also rooted a cutting myself with no issues and this one is pretty much the size of this plant when I got it. So that was approximately the size and I wondered why the cutting was so small and believe me I understand it's because this plant is quite slow to grow. So this cutting will be going to one of my friends as a gift. I don't... Uh, does he know? Did I tell him? For me this plant took quite a long time to grow to this size. It is two years old at this point and it took long to bloom. Of course, some of this could be due to me and I will tell you all about it, but I generally don't think this is a particularly fast grower. The plant did try to bloom very early on for me, but it very quickly lost that peduncle and I assume it is either due to underwatering or red spider mites because both things occurred and I actually just discovered that it does have red spider mites again which is lovely. Once I transferred it to a mix of bark and moss, the plants started to grow much faster, actually not extremely fast, it wasn't mind-blowing, but it was actually a lot better than in the past. And it was at that time that I started to water my Hoyas more regularly. During that period, I would water it once or twice a week, depending on the season, how hot it was, how humid it was inside, and also I would give it fertilizer each week. And that is why I really don't recommend you to water your Hoyas once a month. Believe me, just find a good mix and water them more frequently and you will see a whole lot more growth. It started to look like a much nicer plant and I think it was in winter or early spring of 2020 that it produced its first bloom and it is wonderful. Unfortunately some of the buds did drop because probably of my inconsistent watering so it wasn't a nice full set of blooms but it was still lovely to finally see the plant in bloom. In April, sadly, this plant suffered root mealybugs. As you know, a lot of my Hoyas had to be treated for root mealybugs, so I had to cut off the roots. I rooted the cuttings again and I potted it in semi-hydro, and it's doing really well in semi-hydro. Oh, I did not know that we have roots going out of the bottom. Also, I read many times in Hoya groups on Facebook that Hoyas will not bloom in semi-hydro. It's completely untrue. 
they will definitely bloom in semi-hydro. When the plant bloomed for the first time, it was very clear to me that it is not Hoya Affinity Chuniana PNG6. This plant does not look like Hoya Chuniana. The flowers do not look like Hoya Chuniana. So I went on Facebook on Hoya Identification Group and I typed the name under which I got it. And I did get some nice photos of the flower. In the comments on those posts, I saw that they compared this plant, or a lot of people said that it looks very similar to Hoya species affinity Helvigiana IML1134. Since I did not take great photos of the flower on my plant, I couldn't really compare them, but it seemed plausible that it could be that plant, so I kept calling it Hoya species affinity Helvigiana. But it is not that. Hoya that circulates as Hoya species affinity Helvigiana IML1134 is not Hoya species affinity Helvigiana. It is Hoya Nicholsoniae. But Miro won't find this out until September of this year. The Hoyas like to keep me in the dark. When the plant bloomed again, which was quite recently, and by the way, it did produce a very nice set of flowers, I took detailed photos, which you will see, that I sent to Hoya Master of the Universe, Toral Nighthouse, and she forwarded those photos to Nathalie Simonson. I expected then that they will confirm that this Hoya is Hoya species affinity Helwigiana, but that did not happen. What Nathalie said is that this is Hoya Nicholsonie. Mind blown. Actually, not really mind blown because it it does make sense. The flowers look very similar to flower of any Hoya Nicholsonie. The thing that threw me off is that the leaves, the size of the leaf, and the shape of the leaf don't really look like my Hoya Nicholsonia, which is an awful plant, by the way. The clone that I have with a slightly bigger leaves does not grow. It is a terrible, miserable existence in this universe, and I think probably in several months, if it doesn't pick up, well, there is always trash. I was told then that I could keep the accession number PNG6 with this plant. That was a bit confusing to me because there is a Hoya Chuniana PNG6, and obviously that accession number belongs to that clone. I just think what happened here is that someone down the road assigned a session number to this plant and, you know, it started to circulate. And a lot of people will sell this and will have this in their collection as Hoya Affinity Chuniana PNG 6. Now, in my case, I will keep all the information that I have, but I think I will just continue to refer to it as Hoya Nicholsonie. I think probably it is very likely that it is Hoya Nicholsonie IML1134, and if I got this plant under the name Hoya species Helvigiana 1134 or IML1134, if I then discovered that it is a Nicholsonie, then I would just change it to Hoya Nicholsonie IML1134. For me, it is interesting to keep all this information. It is not absolutely necessary because I do believe that a session number is essentially wrong. In the Hoya cards that I got from Patamit, what? Hold on. In the Hoya cards that I got from Patamit Wattanasa Kunjaroin, I hope this is a better pronunciation than last time, there is a Hoya Nicholsonie IML. 1134 and it is said that it is sold as Hoya species affinity Helwigiana. By the way, you can get these Hoya cards from Patamit himself. He has a Facebook page that you probably know. It's a Hoya study corner by SC Plants on Facebook. He has an Instagram page and all of that will be linked down below. A good thing about this is that on the back you can actually or I can actually see but you will see somewhere on the screen. I will share the card with you. There is a detailed photo of the flower of Hoya Nicholsonia IML1134, and it looks exactly like the flower that I have, and the foliage looks exactly like my foliage. You can see the size, it gets up to 8 centimeters, which looks pretty much identical to my plant. Some of them are a bit narrower, some of them are a bit wider. There are many variations on Hoya Nicholsonie. I have two, which I also forgot to get. <sighs> Preparing for the video, zero out of ten. <laughs> One of these I also featured in 30 Days of Hoya, and as you can see, it looks like pure piece of poop. The plant constantly gets 
damages some type of blackish spots on the newer growth they fall off they die back i restarted this plant probably four or five times by now and for some reason it just does not want to do well the white stuff that you can see is from cumulus it is the sulfur based fungicide so i sprayed it because i do think there may be some spider mites here i don't really see them i do see them on the other plant but maybe you know this time it will finally decide to live and if not i really am done with this plant i know that to some of you it may seem cruel to discard of the plant but i've had it for two years there were periods where it didn't have spider mites where it did have spider mites and i restarted the plant several times in different potting mixes and nothing really works it just does not want to be alive and that's fine with me another clone that i have is the new guinea ghost and it's very small it's two small cuttings that have started to grow which i will also treat right now just in case i don't see spider mites but since it was on the same shelf i will treat them and that's by the way the best thing to do if you see spider mites on one plant you can assume the entire shelf has it <laughs> It's just the way things work. Also with mealybugs, if one Hoya has it, all of them probably have them. If, you know, they're touching, if the vines are touching, which is pretty impossible not to happen with Hoyas. This clone, the New Guinea Ghost, has a session number NS16006. It is a lovely, lovely plant. It has a nice silver leaf and i know that i did say that it's overpriced and i think it's still overpriced most likely i got this as a gift from carolina so love you i think i said in my videos about hoas that i think are overpriced that i would consider paying some amount of money not 300 euros that i think it goes for maybe it's slightly less now but i would consider paying you know, maybe close to 100, maybe a little bit less. It depends on the size. The plants for 300 euros, I think, have several nodes and they're nice established plants, but no. And for my other clone of Hoi Nicole Sonier, I honestly don't know why it's so miserable, but I think it wants to meet its maker. The plant doesn't stay in bloom for a very long time. For me, I think it was close to three days. And if we do look at Hoya cards, it says, two nights and one day. Now I did not count the nights and the day, but I think it was close to three days, which is the reason why you don't really see this plant in bloom now. It takes some time to prepare the video and I wanted really to show you what it looks like. And I think it's an interesting story about identification of this Hoya. The flowers are lovely. They're very small. They have a white Corona and creamish Corolla. In different lighting, it can also appear to be almost orange but when you move it around you will see that it's kind of yellowish creamish they do have a scent which reminds me a bit of hoya latifolia but much milder now a little bit more about the hoya nicholsonie this plant was named after baroness carol nicholson and i have tried to find out who baroness carol nicholson is but i couldn't she lived around 1866 and all that information is in the hoya cards aside from that i wasn't really able to find anything on her if you do know who that is please leave a comment down below i would love to know this plant is native to australia and it is native to papua asia and all of hoi nicholsonie should come from that part now there is a bit of confusion about hoi nicholsonie and hoi potsi and to my understanding no plants should be called hoi potsi because that name is wrong it seems that the original hoi potsi or the plant that they named hoi potsi came from china and it was later discovered or established that this is actually a hoya verticillata now there are times when hoya verticillata and nicholsonie may look similar and really the best way to differentiate between the two is the flowers natalie simonson says that nicholsonie typically has a creamish yellowish flower and that verticillata have a completely white snowy flower and by that we really refer to the corolla of the flower also it seems that all the verticillata have slightly thicker leaves than hoya nicholsonie so that is your clue of course some plants today are still sold as hoya potsi and some of those may be verticillata and some of those may be hoya nicholsonie the reason why hoya nicholsonie was confused with hoya potsi is because paul forster and david Liddell gave the name potsi to one of the 
Australian species that was in fact Hoya nicholsoni. Again, from what I understand, no plant today should be called Hoapotzi because the original one that was named Potzi is in fact Verticillata and the name that is oldest should be used and Verticillata came before Potzi so we can just toss Potzi in the bin. If you do go to the Plants of the World online which is a project by Royal Botanic Gardens in Q, you will see that they list Hoya Colsoni as a synonym for Hoya Verticillata variety Verticillata and it's all a mess, so that should be sorted out. I don't really know when, but from their list, it seems that Hoya Nicholsonie should be grouped under Verticillata, and they really should not. They are separate species, so we still have Hoya Verticillata and a lot of plants that are now Verticillata. In the video I made, why do Hoyas change name and why does it matter, I attached a similar list with Hoya Verticillata, but I referred to Q's website to write all those names, and I, it was brought to my attention that this list is not, in fact, correct. I will attach a new list on the side, and that list comes from Patamit, uh, from his Hoya cards, and it is a corrected list, and I do assume that one day in the future it will all be reflected in Q's records, so we will all have access to all the correct information. It's the, the dream. So it will be easier to know exactly what your Hoya is now. But just, you know, to make this clear, Hoya Nicholsonie is not Hoya Verticillata, and there is no Hoya Potsi. I don't think this is a very difficult plant to grow once you figure out how much water it wants, and it's not very little, <laughs> let me just tell you that. It does like its water. It starts to grow much better. Unfortunately, it is very prone to spider mite, it seems. In fact, Hoyas are, in general, very prone to spider mites. You wouldn't think it, but they are, and humidity doesn't really help. Whoever said that needs to be shot because he is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> My humidity is currently it's at 70 and it doesn't help and trust me there are days when it goes over 80 and I still do have red spider mites. I think the best way is to figure out a solution, you know, some treatment that works for you. I suggest experimenting with dif different ones if you do not have access to something that is cumulus, which is sulfur-based. I assume that possibly some oil-based insecticide would work. I don't have much faith in neem oil because it did use that in the past and it really didn't help me, but paraffin oil did, so something like that could be useful, but there are many products out there. Just be persistent, you know? They are very persistent, the spider mites, and you just have to beat them at their own game. That is my... that is my a device to you and, you know, pray to Hoya gods and all of that. I keep this Hoya on that Hoya shelf in the back. I don't know how this thing works. Tough to figure out the mirror image. So that shelf in the back under, that is turned off, but that is a 20 watt LED light, 5000 Kelvins, I believe that one is. It's slightly warm yellow, warm white yellow is warm anyways, it's warm white, and it does really well. It seems to grow very nicely. Some of the bottom leaves do have a bit of sun stress, not really sun stress, but they do get that reddish margin, and on some of the newer leaves, like this one that is probably filled with mites, you can see a bit of that reddish color. It can get more red, and I do not recommend overdoing it, but it seems to be very easy to get this plant to blush up just a bit. I do notice that in summer this plant will get more blushy, and that's just because there is more light coming in summer through that northwest facing window, and in winter obviously that is not the case. As I mentioned, it is in semi-hydro now, so whenever I water it I give it nutrients as well. I use the powdered orchid fertilizer that comes from Belgian Orchid Nursery Acarne, which is similar to MSU fertilizer. I've said that a lot of times in the channel. Maybe I should start leaving the links for that. That's not a bad idea, actually. I love that fertilizer. It's very easy to use. It seems to be doing well for the plants. I also fertilized it once a week when it was in organic mix. I think 
if you just grow it in bark and moss there really isn't much there so i prefer to fertilize them just a bit every time i water and that is all for today and all that i know so far on hoya nicholsonie there are some very very nice clones out there i have to say i do love small leaves i think actually this hoya nicholsonie is why I got into the small leaves because they're absolutely adorable. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, you can do that now. I make new videos every now and, and then. Oh, let's keep it honest. Sometimes I make videos and sometimes, sometimes I need to take care of my plants. So I make videos. That is the most honest thing to say. It's just a chaotic existence in the universe. I hope you will have a wonderful weekend and I will see you soon. Bye! I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. One anonymous patron, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Carrie Danuk, Daniels, Estelle, Houseplan, Heather, Hoyas and Whatnots, Kelsey Jager, Kristen Sherwood, Mars B. Martina, Alif Perday, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, PJ, Rachel Collette, Conroy, Robin L. Jennings, Spinach Geek, Stephanie H2O, Tanya, TJWO, Vicky Tinkler, and Zlokov Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons. Angelina Farnan, April Arroyo, Brianna Phillips, Catherine G, Jacinta, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Lori Murphy, Morgan Kennedy, Nikki, and Ringlov. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline Dinsla and Tang Watanas Cole. Thank you all so much for your incredible support. I hope that you are enjoying the videos, and I will see you soon.